Hello and welcome to this edition of the Video Market Update. Before going into uh, the week ahead, let's talk about the most recent economic releases which had a notable impact on uh, the market, especially uh, the inflation figures, whether from China or even the UK or the US. Most of the inflation da data that were released uh, over the past few days, most of them were higher than the previous readings, but some of, also some of them were less than expected. However, this doesn't change the fact that the inflation is rising gradually on a global scale, which is something that is basically all the central banks would not happy or not be happy with, uh, since that the stimulus packages are still there while the growth is still very lower and also sluggish. In China, the inflation now is at, at the highest level since 2014. In the UK, the CPI now is at the highest level since June of 2014, posting the third monthly increase in a row. As for the US, also the month-over-month -month inflation or the month-over-month -month CPI posted the biggest monthly increase since 2013. These figures are also worrying somehow, as an overshoot in inflation is not desired by any of the central banks around the world. But in the UK, the Bank of England said that inflation, or they think that inflation might reach 2.5% over the next coming or, or the next few uh, or the next few months, basically due or before coming down again uh, due to the Brexit impact. As for the US, we think or I believe that uh, things might even get out of control over the next few months at the US or as the US a new administration in the states looking to boost it, its fiscal stimulus. Among all that, gold and silver are two metals to watch. Last week, gold indeed added the just a slight gains and reached its or 1240, but failed to hold above that resistance. However, silver traded above its saving dollars for the first time this year, and those two metals will be under our spotlight over the next a few weeks, a few months, as we we believe that it has a very good potential over the next few weeks. As for the US dollar index, also it remained within the same time range, trading slightly above its 100 uh, 100 barrier, but we still believe that another leg lower is very possible, especially if the Federal Reserve also delays the next rate hike, which is promised to be in March meeting. Yet, the US equities are still soaring to new record highs, which is still worrying to us as we or we haven't seen any reasonable correction for more than six months now. Valuations are also skyrocketing, which brings back the, the memories of what happened right before the financial crisis in 2008-2009. Therefore, I will not be interested actually for the time being in touching any of these indices anytime soon, and I will be interested in the European indices more than the US indices. As for uh, the week ahead, it is expected to be another uh, light trading uh, light tra uh, trading week with a few economic releases, but first of all, on Monday, it is very likely to be very calm, especially that the US will be closed in, in observance of the President's Day. But we will be watching also manufacturing and services PMI from all over Europe, especially on Tuesday, which is said to have also a notable impact on the market, especially that we will be waiting for the initial data. On Wednesday, we will keep an eye also uh, on two events, the UK GDP data, which is expected, or this is the second estimate for the GDP, which is set to remain unchanged or and revised at 0.6% for Q4 of last year. But most importantly, we'll be waiting for the FOMC meeting minutes, where we will be looking for clues about March meeting. On Thursday, or on, on Thursday, we will be also watching Australia's private capital expenditure, which is something that you need to keep an eye on, especially uh, that it will have the biggest impact on the Aussie on that day after it failed to break out last week. In addition, of course, to the U.S. crude oil inventories, which remains also higher over the past seven weeks, yet crude oil prices remain within the same time frames as we will still be waiting for new catalysts to move the oil prices. On Friday, it is also likely to be very calm during the European session and the Asian session, but uh, we will be watching also more inflation data uh, during the U.S. session from Canada, in addition to the U.S. in new home sales. So, uh, so those are the most uh, important figures that we will be watching over the next or over the next few days and the next few uh, and the next few days. But for now, let's end this video with a look at some technical charts. So beginning with uh, the Kiwi and the Aussie, as we uh, looked at it uh, last week. Another week with another failure to break uh, to break out also on the uh, on the Kiwi, which is basically forming more than four tops in a row. And this is basically what happened also for the past uh, for the past two weeks. Another two declines or another two weeks of consecutive declines, adding more uh, weight on the technical indicators, showing there's some sort of a possibility for further uh, declines ahead. But at the same time, I would love to see another another down or another leg lower over the next few days and probably mostly to to look for another decline at least we've reached the 38.2 percent but now i'll be looking for another uh, for another leg lower at least to 0 0.71 
20s, which represents the 50% Fibonacci of the recent rally that we've seen, uh, we've seen also since uh, since uh, since almost two weeks. Uh, so this is, but for the time being, I would I would definitely uh, my stop would be above last or the past two weeks uh, two weeks high, uh, with a possibility also to uh, all the way down to 70 71 20. As for the Aussie, which basically I'm, I'll be more interested in the Aussie more than the Kiwi, especially that we will be waiting, as I said, for the capital private expenditure. It's the same formation. We haven't seen any kind of breakout above uh, above those two levels, which is 76.32 and 76.70s, uh, since since almost like 2000, 2015 or May 2015. So this is why also the technical indicators are heavily overbought, which basically explains that there will be a very slight chance for another rally over the next few or, or at least uh, during next week. So therefore, I'll be interested to short uh, the Aussie over the next uh, over the next few days will stop above last week's high, and I'll be looking for a potential at least toward toward the 50-day uh, moving average. But if you want to use also Fibonacci, it is I guess it's almost the same. Uh, the same area first of all 23 and 38.2 percent Fibonacci which is also at the same level of the 50 day moving average which is 75 11. As for the euro, the euro basically made it uh, made it actually kind of a clear that there is, is still a possibility for another uh, for another rally. First of all we tested the 50 day moving average we failed to hold the velvet and we continued all the way down but the good thing is as we said last week the 61.8% Fibonacci from the recent rally was a very good dip buy in the euro, and this is where buyers started to appear again last week at 105, almost 105.27, uh, leading to another rally all the way back to 10 to 106.50s over the uh, over uh, which basically was on on almost on Thursday 106.77, but on Friday we declined all the way back and basically closed the week above 106 which is still positive for me, it is still positive and at the same time technical indicators were heavily oversold over the past or over, over last, last week in our last week video and also uh, crossing over to the upside this is basically giving us some sort of a uh, 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 at least uh, some sort of a, an indication that there is still uh, dip buyers coming in into the market over the next or, or over the past few days that's why I'll be interested even for another dip buy as long as it stays above last week uh, last week close, which is 105.27, looking for another uh, rally at least toward 106.70s and maybe 107 and 108. As for the Japanese yen, the Japanese yen actually made also another uh, another interesting move because it broke above its uh, uh, daily uh, downtrend line of resistance and continued all the way all the way back up, almost touched this 50-day moving average, but failed to do so and also declined all the way all the way back. This is again despite the fact that the US dollar index continued to trade a slightly higher after last week. But at the same time, this is we have a retest of the broken uh, the broken uh, the broken uh, downtrend on the daily chart. We should be watched very carefully, of course, over the next few days. Especially that technical indicators are right now crossing to the downside, which I guess that it might be just a fake breakout or a fake out that we've seen over the past few days. But I would like to just wait and see for the next few days if there will be any kind of uh, any kind of uh, reaction at these at these levels before taking any any action or before deciding on the next trade. Going forward, also to the British pound, the British pound remains above its 50 and the 100-day moving average. Last week close was still kind of negative because we closed below the body uh, the uh, the uh, the body of the uh, of the previous candles, whether if it's if it's the if it's the one on on Wednesday or Thursday or even the one that we've seen for the past few for the past few weeks, this is still some sort of a, a bearish sign that the uh, uh, the British pound is still under pressure. We declined almost like for three days in a row, but at the same time, I would like to see a clear break below below the 50 and the 100 day moving average in order to open the way for further declines. Almost, I would still be interested to see 122 uh, in the next few days, on the next few in the next few weeks. With a possible stop above uh, above last week's high. Going into also gold and silver. Gold. Uh, this is a little bit worrying to me because this might be uh, a formation of a double top formation uh, on the next in the next few days. And this is still around the 61.8 percent Fibonacci retracement, the one that I mentioned in our previous video. But it's still again the technical cases are not that bad. The RSI is still higher, and also the Stochastic has still more room to uh, more room to 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 to, to rise. Therefore, I think so. 
it's still 1240, 1250. It's still a potential to uh, to get uh, to get there. But as long as we stay above the 100-day moving average, which basically on uh, on Tuesday it tried like to break lower, but ended the day higher, which is very positive. So I guess so. This is might be just a temporary uh, retracing to the downside before the upside rally resumes. Finally, as I said, U.S. equities every week we're posting, we're we're just putting another line above another line above another line with no reactions. It's still ongoing. Technical indicators are heavily overbought for the past since November. Uh, this is the daily chart. Even the weekly will be even worse. Uh, but for the weekly chart, it's the same since October of last year until today. There is no reasonable reaction. There is no reasonable retracement to the downside. I'm gonna stay away from the U.S. equities more than any any time in my uh, in my entire career because again those these levels are kind of like uh, uh, very high right now Dow Jones is just 2,000 at 20,600 so I would consider staying away from the US equities and also would be interested in European equities just like DAX and also FTSE we where we will be looking for maybe new highs in the next few in the next few weeks but again I would advise you to stay away uh, from the US equities so this is it for today. Again, follow us on our social media sites, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. If you have any comments, feedback, or even any requests, you can also leave it below the video in the comments. Thank you for watching. I'll see you once again next week. Have a good day.